church. As we worship together this morning, may we grow in our understanding of the height, width, and depth of God. With that understanding, we will be set free to become the people God wants us to be. Please join me in the call of worship. Come, all who seek the glory of the Lord God Almighty. Turban? Tur kind of like a turban? 
the Rosie the River Award. I've got a picture of her in one of those, very cute. We were going to go down tomorrow, and I wanted to move the, the session meeting to tonight. However, my wife said no. We're going down today. Uh, and so, session members, I'm switching that around. Session meeting will remain on Monday, uh, 6 o'clock. And we will head down after church to, to see our new granddaughter. We are excited uh, uh, about uh, Operation Christmas Child this year. This is a challenging year. No doubt about it. This is one of the most challenging years of ministry that, that uh, I've faced because of all that this country and this world is going through. But despite the challenge, we're going to uh, try to uh, do a great job in putting together these uh, Christmas boxes for these kids that are in great need. And uh, we are going, there's, there's a little insert in your book today you want to take a look at. I'm going to show a video here uh, in a few minutes. We're going to challenge that number that we got last year. Does anybody know how many we put together last year? 56. Whew! That is not going to be easy. That will not be easy uh, today uh, during these times. But we're going to shoot for it. We're going to give, give it our best. And uh, we're going to put those uh, boxes together. You can put a box together yourself. We've got boxes available. Or you can just contribute uh, items. And uh, we'll have a team of people putting those items together in the boxes. Plus, we, we need money to send them. I think it's nine bucks a, a box to send them. So that is going to be a great mission outreach for us this year during these difficult times. We're going to say, hey, despite the difficulty, we're going to do our best. Any other announcements this morning? Anything I missed? Just one thing on the shoe boxes. If anyone wants a box, they can see me after church. Nobody's got boxes if you want to put together a box yourself. All right. I think we're ready for today's video about the shoe boxes. First, start with a medium sized cardboard or plastic shoe box. If you want to wrap it, cover the box and lid separately. Second, decide whether you will pack a shoebox for a girl or a boy and for which age group. Third, fill it with gifts. Every shoebox needs a wow item. Then fill it up with other fun toys, hygiene items, and school supplies. Now here are some things that you are not allowed to put in a shoebox gift. Candy, toothpaste, gum, used or damaged items, war-related items, seeds, food, liquids or lotions, medications, or breakable items. Visit SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC for a list of gift suggestions. Next is to pray. This is the most important step. Pray for the child who will receive your gift. Also, include a $9 donation, as this is critical to cover shipping and other project costs. You can give online through Follow Your Box to discover the destination of your shoebox gift. Finally, close by telling them when your church or group will be collecting shoeboxes and where to drop them off. Be sure to mention the specific date. So that's how you pack a shoebox gift. Collect shoebox gifts in a high traffic area so people will notice as more gifts are collected. Try to set up an eye-catching display. To learn how, watch our Project Leader 201 video. You can also consider hosting a celebration event. Check out our guide available at SamaritansPurse.org slash OCC Project Leader. This is a great way for your church or group to celebrate together what God has done as you've packed shoebox gifts. Share your photos with us through the Project Leader Facebook group or on your own Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Just be sure to tag us so that we can celebrate along with you. Finally, bring your gift-filled shoeboxes to the drop-off location nearest you. Nearly 5,000 locations are open annually during National Collection Week, the third week of November, every year, Monday to Monday. Please be sure to bring the correct contact information for your church or group, as well as the address. Remember, if you need extra support or more information, don't hesitate to ask in the Project Leader Facebook group or connect with your local year-round volunteer area team. My last piece of advice is to pray. As a Project Leader, the most important thing you can do is to pray. Pray for your goal, collection, packing, drop off, everything. Seek the Lord through the entire process and watch Him answer prayers. All right, so the challenge is, uh, is to 
before us, and uh, we are going to take on that challenge. We're ready for our children's sermon. I like to golf. Some of you know that. This past summer, we took uh, Matthew and Noah golfing a couple times at the par three course at Overwood Bay. Boy, we had fun. One of these days, I'm going to take him to the big golf course. When you get to the big golf course, you've got to watch out for sand traps because it's very easy to get caught in a sand trap. When that happens to me, I'm in trouble. Being an average golfer, it takes me two, three, four times just to hit the ball out of the sand trap. But there's lots of traps in life, young ones, that you've got to watch out for. Years ago, I was driving through Cadiz, Ohio, and police lights appeared in my, in my rear view mirror. I thought, oh no, I'm in trouble. What am I doing? I'm only going 30 miles an hour. I pulled over. The police stopped me. Came up, wanted to see my license and everything else. And they said, you, out, you know how fast you're going, sir? I said, 30 miles an hour. The speed limit is 25. Oh, I didn't know that. Luckily, I had two beautiful girls in the, in the back seat. <laughs> Rebecca and, and Sarah, my two daughters, and they were back there smiling. And the guy looked back and he said, you know what, I'm going I'm to give you a break this time. You watch it from now on when you come through Cass. Ever since then, I've always driven 25 miles an hour when I go through Cass. Now, there's other tracks in life. I don't know if your family has ever went in, run into one of these. It's called a tourist trap. There's something called the Teddy Bear Museum down south. If you go into the Teddy Bear Museum, guess what you see? Teddy bears! <laughs> a whole museum full of teddy bears. That's not all. It costs you to get into the museum. And then, and of course, they have a store. Where you buy teddy bears and teddy bear games and teddy bear candy and, and everything else. By the time you get out of the Teddy Bear Museum, you spent $200. You've got to be careful of tourist traps. Jesus taught his disciples not to get caught in a trap. There's lots of bad people out there. You young ones need to realize this. They're going to lie to you, these bad people. They want you to follow them. They'll even give you things so that you'll trust them. But well, you've got to be careful. They're all trying to uh, set traps. Now, here's the best thing to do. Listen to your parents. Your parents are going to teach you who you can trust and who not to trust. At church, you're going to learn this, though. Keep God first in your life. Pray. Talk to God. Draw close to God. Tell God how much you, you love God and how much you, you want to be the person God wants you to be. And see, that's all about putting God first in your life. When you do that, you become wiser and, and wiser. You begin to understand where God wants you to go and what God wants you to do, who you can trust and who you can't trust. By keeping God first, seeking God, knowing God, loving God, you will be more alert when people try to trap you and lead you in the wrong direction because you'll know in your heart. Let's pray. Lord, there's so many traps out there in life, but we know that we listen to, to our parents and learn. If, if, if we listen to you and put you first in our life and seek you, we'll grow in wisdom and we'll understand uh, what to do, when to do it, who to trust and who not to trust. Bless these young ones and give them that wisdom, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Knowing that we are flawed human beings, women in a fallen world, we come humbly before our holy God. It is by God's grace through the Son that we can be restored and renewed. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh Lord, so often today we tend to take you for granted, and we lose sight of the fact that you are God. We see many advances in computers and electronics and chemistry and medicine, and we can observe lives that seem to be go faster every day. Yet we fail to see your glory and our power are far beyond all these things. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to see. Amen.
Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Lord, we pray that your hand and power would be upon them. Lord, we, we 
lift up uh, young Sophia and, and all of our young ones. We pray, Lord, that you surround them with your presence and power. They're, they're going off to school and, and uh, facing other challenges. We pray that you would protect them and, and, and keep them healthy. Continue, Lord, to be with uh, Colleen, battling di uh, Colton, I mean, battling diabetes. Be with Ron Foster, health problems, Lord, watch over him. We continue to lift up Lisa to you and her knee. Lord, we think of Don facing difficulties and Libby's mom, Greta. Watch over her. Be with Peggy, we pray. Touch her. Heal her vision. Watch over Nancy and her health. Young Luca, we lift up to you in need of heart surgery. We continue to pray for his health. Lord, we lift up these unspoken requests to you. You know what they are. You know what needs to be done. Move through these unspoken requests. Move in hearts. Watch over uh, Dave Bruni and, and Carl and Fair, Fairbanks and their health. Be with them. Shirley Ben Lyon, Lord, watch over her. We think of Randy Walker battling health problems and Bob Archkowski. We, we think of Edna. Be with her and watch over her. Ron Retzer with heart, heart problems. We lift up to you and, and uh, Lynn's husband, Ray. Healing up from that shoulder, we pray there be no more complications. Be with Patty facing kidney problems, Lord. Johnny Giffen, who's battling COVID, we ask Lord to be with him. We give you praise for uh, answered prayer, for being with uh, Sarah and her family, and the, the delivery of that new baby, healthy baby, Mary and Rose. Lord, we thank you for all these people. We pray now that uh, you would uh, surround uh, this church and this ministry with your presence and power. Get us through these difficult times, day by day, week by week, month by month. We pray that uh, this virus, Lord, would, uh, would dissipate, go down, and leave this country and this world. We pray for those working on a vaccine, that that, that vaccine would be effective. Lord, we ask you to watch out over everyone. We pray that uh, we would back on a positive road. Be with our military people around the world. Watch over them. Keep them safe. Bring them home to their families once their tour of duty is done. We thank you for our, our missionary people around the world sharing the love of Christ. So Lord, we thank you for all these people. And now we pray together the prayer that the Son of God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is now. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is time to put the church's address up on a slide and play the offertory for those at home.
the opportunity to give back. Give back to different charities. Give back to this, this church so that this church might continue to move forward in its ministry here in this community. Lord, I want to ask you your blessing on these good people. Continue to pour your abundance upon them and use them as channels of blessing to others. We pray that these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe see you. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 to 23. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, Lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else would distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face. For no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory pass, passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. This ends the reading of the Old Testament. <coughs> Moses said to God, I want to see your glory. Moses wanted to see God. Moses wanted to know God in a, in a, a, a deeper, more intimate, intimate relationship. That's a theme throughout uh, the scriptures. Uh, people get to a point in life where they say, Lord, you brought me to this point in life. Now I'm beginning to understand more. Now I know that I want to see you. I want to know you more deeply. I, I, I want my, my life to be filled with your power and your presence. I want to understand you more. This song, I think, perfectly reflects that. It's called, I See the Lord. We've sung it before. Hopefully you remember it. 